guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome to another video of mine. I'm delighted to welcome Dennis Lukens onto the show today. Dennis, how are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for inviting me on the show. It's a pleasure. No problem. You're all over the Ukraine at the moment, aren't you? Well, yeah. So uh, <laughs> uh, I'm an Irish citizen through my mother, my, my beautiful yeah. late Irish mother and grandparents 101 years ago, got on a ship and left County Cork. And when it ended up landed in New York, uh, where I was born, um, and then I, I spent that. my, I see, yeah, I hear my little New York, New York accent. I spent my whole career, my whole soccer career, basically in America, and then I ended up in St. Lucia, coaching the Olympic team in St. Lucia, and then came to Ukraine for a, a two week vacation. That was eleven years ago. We never <laughs> left. That's what happens. That's what happens. Now you're a director and owner of uh, IRC FC. Is this correct? Yes, I'm one of several people who are yeah. owners and directors. Yeah, absolutely. And um, there's a couple <clears> of people on there. Lisa Gainley, Dominguez Leal. Al now, I'll probably get these names wrong. Alexia Geraldini, Sabrina Geraldino. Sorry, I think. Jamie Fullerton and Chris Macon. Um, you did something. well there. You did <laughs> all good. <laughs> oh, I got I got the first one wrong, I think, to be fair. But uh, they're on the board as well as such or a director or have Correct. investors into this uh, venture and obviously RC FC used them um, you guys applied as Dublin County FC last year and uh, didn't quite make it is that true well we so the the holding company so to speak is Irish CFC I pulled that name out of the air everybody sort of uh, likes to criticize it you know uh but that that would not be the name of the club going forward yeah, exactly. it was Irish C doing business as Dublin County FC if we had gotten the license we would have operated and been known as Dublin County FC. Yeah. <clears throat> now, last year, obviously, you didn't get in, but um, how close were you to actually getting in? And what, yeah. I suppose, why did you not get in, essentially? Close. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about, you know, all the, you know, I've had a lot of things go very well in my life, but I was thinking the other day about all the things that sort of went wrong. This was something that went wrong in the last moment. We, we were invited to apply by the, the League of Ireland. Mm. We went through some Zoom calls and so forth and so on. We got past that point uh, it was actually an expression of interest then we got past that point and they asked us to make the application which we did it probably took about three months I, i'm going to guess off the top of my head more than 100 documents that myself and another person did so so we worked full time on it for probably about two months it cost us money we had to get light inspections for the state and we had to get stadium inspections we had to get all kinds of stuff so we, we spent i had to pay people to work with us we probably had 20 people sign contracts, you know, a, a president, uh, chief financial officer, director of the youth entity, uh, director of football. For, I mean, so we had so many people on board. Everybody helped. And we were, <clears throat> we were actually approved. So we were approved 48 hours before the, before the final decision. Actually, we were recommended for approval uh, by the FAI 48 mm -hmm. hours before the final decision. And the, so the meeting was at, uh, was at, I guess, five o'clock. And at 1.43 in the afternoon, I got an email from a low level uh, worker within the Sport Ireland facilities telling us they were withdrawing the stadium from us. They were terminating our agreement. Now, I'm not sure that they were able to terminate the agreement. I could have sued them, I guess. I could have taken them to court. But by the time the dust had cleared, uh, we couldn't get another stadium in an hour. It was an hour and a half or so. So in that hour and a half, how are we going to get another stadium? So the, the FAI voted. We had everything in place, all the money, all the people, all the documents. We didn't have a stadium. And so we got denied a license. And uh, then... Funny. Yeah, go on, yeah. And then, and, and then there was a meeting, I guess, at 9 o'clock in the morning where the League of Ireland voted on who to accept into the league. We didn't have a license, so we didn't get voted in. However, we had contacted a home farm, you know, and I'll be forever grateful to them. The chairman the night before told them what happened. They did a board meeting in the morning, and by three o'clock in the afternoon that Saturday, they agreed to lease us the stadium for home farm, which was a certified FAI stadium. They played international games there and so forth. So if they could have only waited until three o'clock or given us a little leeway, we, we would have gotten the license. But that's not the way it went. We were denied the license, and then we were not allowed to enter the League of Ireland. Uh, the stadium in question was Morton Stadium, isn't that right? Correct. 
Correct. Yeah, and um, why do you think that happened? Why do you think it was left so late that they pulled out of that uh, arrangement? You, you, had, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being recorded, so you know, I don't want to see, I don't want to sound any say anything that I shouldn't. Uh, but I, it's very difficult to, for a, 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 anybody who has a normal level of intelligence to, to, to understand. I mean, uh, so we had a, a, an agreement, a written signed contract in place for two, two and a half months. OK, they could have terminated it. They could have called us. They could. Have, and we and we sent uh, people over there two weeks prior to this decision to inspect the state. They could have told us then they never said anything. They never peeped. And as I understand, I, I don't want to get into the details. It's, 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 I'll, I'll start getting unpleasant. I'm not sure why they did it, uh, because they said that there was going to be use from the track and field committee. There was going to be uh, Olympic athletes. You know, it wasn't true. I looked at their schedule. Mm -hmm. They had plenty of openings for us to play and train. We weren't, even, we weren't going to train. They were only going to play. They couldn't find an, uh, two hours a week, uh, a week for us or two hours every two weeks. I mean, it's, it's just you can't, you can't make this stuff up. Um, mm -hmm. There may have been some underlying plot. Um, a lot of people believe that to be true. I'm someone who tries to believe in the good in people and, 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 and not, not believe that there was some some reason or some underlying reason why this happened. I'll just accept what they told me and move on. Um, as I said, in, uh, the FAI treated us very well. FAI, as we did the application, you know, it was a difficult application process. Let me tell you, it's really mm. difficult. They helped us. They, they weren't against us. They were helping us. We didn't know something. They helped us. We had to find something out. They helped us. You know, at, any, any time, any, at every turn, they helped us. So I can't say anything negative about the FAI. I can't say anything against the League of Ireland. They were helpful to us. They were mm. welcoming to us. So, so whatever happened, happened, you know, it's spilled milk now. I don't want to try to go back over it. And, and, and I have my own ideas on what happened, but it doesn't really matter. So obviously a year as such has passed or a season has passed. And uh, obviously you're still trying to get into the League <clears> of Ireland. But what has changed now from your point of view and what do you see going forward? Well, we should have been in the League of Ireland, in my mm. opinion. <clears throat> why? I mean, why can't you have eleven? I mean, if they could have waited uh, a few hours, we had we would have gotten the stadium. We we could get the stadium at home farm. Um, I so I think they should have held off a little bit. They could have held off twenty four hours. Let us see if we could get that stadium. We did. <clears throat> um, well, it's between eleven teams and ten teams. I mean, mm. just look. I've done I, I've owned an indoor soccer facility scheduling one hundred and sixty teams. You just you just change the, this computer pro no really there's computer programs you just plug eleven and a ten in I mean you know so so this this idea that they didn't want to have eleven teams I don't I don't get that one um, I understand that there was an agreement uh, previously with the um, Shamrock Rovers uh, B team of the two you know which is a reserve team that yeah. they were, they had, in that agreement they were allowed to play for one season it was not for two so one season I didn't see the agreement that's what I've been told. And so then they also applied together with us, and I assume they didn't want them in. Uh, again, I'm, 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 again, I said this before, I've said it before, uh, when we were not being recorded. I'm an Irish citizen, okay, but I'm not uh, currently uh, in with working with an Irish football. So I don't know the reasons why they may, they wouldn't have wanted the, the Shamrock Rovers to win. All I know is that I thought our application was a good application. We, <clears throat> so, uh, my background, I've owned three teams. I've owned two teams in America and one team in the country of Ukraine, unfortunately. Um, my partners, uh, Alexei uh, uh, Gerardino and his wife, Serena, they own a professional team in America. Okay. Jamie Fullerton played in the Premier League. He mm -hmm. was director of emerging talents for Crystal Palace. My good close friend, Chris Macon, was captain of Sunderland. Dominguez Leal played for me. I, I found him when he was a 17-year-old kid. I recruited him for my college team. I lost track of him for 20 years. He heard about what I was doing. He said, how can I get in? How can I invest? He was a top player. at the. He was the greatest player in the history of the school that I coached at, Ridgewater State College. My first recruit became the greatest player in the history of the school. His two kids play for Sporting Lisbon under 19. I mean, what are the chances that two American boys, they're twin boys, would go well. I mean, they're playing in Europe, these guys. So, so my group of the people that I have are really, really good, intelligent people who know the game, who've been in the game, and are bullish. 
Lisa Gainley, by the way, is uh, the cousin of Gainley Home Improvements. She's a member of that family that's got, you know, in, in, in uh, Longford and Athlon yeah. and, 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 uh, and I think uh, Galway, they've got location. Galway, yeah. Anyway, so we've got myself as an Irish citizen, Lisa as an Irish citizen, two Americans and two Englishmen. So we had a good group. We do, I mean, not had, we still have a good group. I said this to someone earlier today. It's so my grandparents and mother left Ireland 101 years ago, and they left because they were Cork was in flames. They were burning down buildings, burning up businesses. The English were still involved with some conflicts. My grandfather said, "Look, let's go across the ocean and go to America. Maybe it's going to be better for us there." Well, now 101 years ago, Ireland is a fantastic country. The the, the wonderful people remain. I, I get on the airplane going to Ireland, and I hear the voices. And I get in such a good mood when I land and I'm, I'm so happy in Ireland when I'm there. I can't because I love the, the people of Ireland. But 100 years ago, the, the, the country, the country was falling apart. Today, it's one of the best countries in Europe. It's, it's, it's one of the richest country in Europe. You got roads that are perfect. You got buildings that are restored. And why? Why? Because people of Ireland, but from foreign investment, Apple, Facebook, Fidelity, because they get a 12% tax rate, they all came to Ireland. They provided jobs, they provided opportunity, they provided money. I'm not saying that they saved Ireland because you know the Irish people made it themselves, but different ideas and foreign investment is a good thing. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. So, so I really think that we have a lot to offer the League of Ireland. Uh, we're very interested still to make it happen. Um, and we think, and, and we have great respect and, and, and admire the League of Ireland. I think it would be a great thing for us. And it would be a great thing for the League to have us in do. Yeah, you, have, you still have all the documentation and uh, you're essentially ready to go, aren't you? If an opportunity arises, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you know I mean, I mean? It's not, so you, you got to create all these documents and submit them. And when, you know, go, going through something like the first time is really difficult. Well, I still mm. have the documents. I, I just got to change the logo on it. You know, that's all I got to do. We're just change. I mean, I'm, I'm being dead. I'm, I'm joking, but I'm being serious. Yeah. I mean, dead serious. I could do it. I could do it in a weekend if I had to. Mm. Um, the only other aspect is the stadium. But I have made uh, I have made an application on two stadiums in two counties that are really great that need a football club. And I believe that within a few days, those those they'll probably both agree to lease me the stadium. Mm. So we'll Can have we just a stadium. Can we just clarify, Dennis, that it's outside Dublin, though? Can we do that? No, it's not inside Dublin. It's outside yeah. Dublin. Okay. And, yeah. and you can figure out the reasons why. There is, there are, well, I mean, there's five teams in Dublin, you know, and one of the big criticisms of us, other than the name of Irish Sea and who they are, you guys, you know, other than, other than that, you know, one of the criticisms is that why Dublin? And we have enough clubs. And, and you know, you know, the reality is that, Look, I respect the guys. You know, they love the Shamrock Rovers. They they love all the different clubs. I mean, you know, the hell with you guys. We don't need another. You know, because they they love their own club. You know, what do we need another club for? I understand. Look, I've, I I um, I have a Shamrock Rovers game. I've been in you know in in their stadium. I've been inside into the you know guest quarters with all the trophies and all the awards. I actually uh, to make you laugh a little bit. Uh, I. Um, you know, I met a young man named Giles, Giles Kilcoyne, and he came and needed a job. And, and so somebody called me and said, there's a young Irishman here. He needs a job for the summer. Dennis, you got the camp down, down in Massachusetts. Can you hire this guy? I said, well, he's a young Irishman. I'm Irish. My mother came over on a boat. Of course, I hired the guy. So I hired him. I hired him. And at the end of the season, he worked for me for eight weeks. Fantastic. He did well. We like this pint every once in a while, like to have a laugh, you know, at the end of the camp, he said, can I stay another week with you? There's no kids there now. It's just, I got 13 buildings. So he, he stayed in one building. I stayed in another halfway through the week. He says, Ireland's coming down to play Italy. I got tickets. I got tickets. Mm -hmm. I said, great. So we, we get in the truck and we start driving to the game on the Wednesday. And I go, he goes, we got to go into the city first. I go, why? Well, I got to go meet my father, and I got we got to go meet Jack Charlton. My <laughs> father owned him Rock Rovers, and my father's the president of the football football association of Ireland, Mister Cook Kilcoyne, the Kilcoyne family, yeah, mm -hmm. who yeah, owned yeah, the Rovers. Yeah. yeah. 
So they, so I spent the whole night with with Mr. Kilcoin, God, and Jackie Charlton. After the game, we, we no really we drank in the pub in, the, in, in 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 the in the stadium. We went around Boston into the bars and had a lot with the players. Uh, so so I love the Shamrock Rovers because the Kilcoin family, you know, introduced me to them. That's a very interesting story. I'm sure Jack Charleston, you know, we all know he likes his points as well. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, you know, everybody talks about Jack Charlton, you know. So I'm just some guy, okay? Mm. And they're in the pub already inside the stadium. Yeah. And I go up to the bar to, to order. Nobody knows me. I go up to order a pint. And Jack, I swear to God, on, on you know, on, on a Bible, Jack walks up and you know, orders a pint. Is how you doing, son? He stood there and talked to me. Like I was like like I was a, a relative for the next hour, you know. Yeah. Jack Charlton, I, I mean a legend. He didn't that know me seems from a to, the wall. That seems to be what he does as well. I've heard quite a few people saying that. So um, he he's that type of person so he was. But uh, so obviously yeah. with the application going forward, obviously the FAI are saying at the minute it's going to be nine teams in the league. But uh, you know they haven't actually expressed any anything else, whether it be 10 teams or not. Do you, have you approached the FAI or how do you plan and deal with it? Or? Uh, yeah, of course I have. I, talk, yeah. I you know, I have, uh, in a professional manner, you know, I've approached them and talked yeah. to them. Um, um, and yes, I have, of course I have. Mm. Mm. Uh, I send them an email just, uh, I think on Thursday, uh, expressing my, my interest yeah. again, yeah. that we'd be, we've got all the documents, we'd be ready to move. I've applied to two teams. Boom! If you want a tenth team, we're ready. Um, mm. They, I know. Look, it's not. This is not a secret. It's. I know that they're interested in, in promotion and relegation third, with the third tier having that model. It's a good model, I think, for sure. You know, so so maybe there's not going to be a tenth team. Maybe they're going to go with a third tier. I personally look. I personally think, why not have ten teams in the first division? Uh, you know, they didn't want to have eleven. You know, last time they didn't, they wanted to have an even number of 10. Well, now yeah. you got nine, make it 10. Um, yeah, exactly. You know, so it doesn't make sense. I mean, again, and people con are concerned about scheduling and so forth and so on. You can do the schedule like, like that. You can, come mm -hmm. on. And then the other thing is, you know, it, it would be too difficult for, for somebody to make an application. I can make an application in, in three or four days. I could do it. So, yeah. so let's hope that they, they've heard me. I think they have heard me. Let's hope they have an open mind about it. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll see what happens. I assume that they'll make an announcement in a week or so, maybe at the end of this week, they're going to provide some clarity. It's easy for us to sit here and guys sit yeah. in a pub having a pint. It's easy for all of us to, to second guess. But, mm. you know, it's not, not easy, you know, making these decisions. It's not easy putting together a third tier. Conceptually, make it's, it's a great idea. But then pulling all the different stakeholders together, yeah. it's not going to be some easy trick. There's a lot of work. A lot of negotiation. Some people won't want to do it. Some people won't want to join the third tier. Um, so again, I'm not the decision maker. They are. I, I will respect whatever decision they make. Uh, and again, I know that it's not going to be easy for them. And then it won't be easy if they go with the third tier. It won't be easy to make it all work be cold for sure. Yeah, I'm guessing if you don't get in as the 10 team, you'd be interested in joining the third tier, though. For sure, but then it's yeah. a little more complicated because it's not absolutely clear on how mm. how you would join the third tier or who would join the third tier yeah nobody you, knows you yes, heard, actually well you've probably heard this for example like you know the leinster league supposedly you know two teams or so would come out of there well you know some people in the leinster league uh, uh, you know have said uh, i'm not speaking out of school because it's common knowledge well why would we so the third tier is amateur it's not professional by the way it's yeah an amateur league so you know the guy a guy in the third tier at the top why am I going to go into another amateur league that we don't run? We don't have a say in how it's run. And I'm going to, my budget is going to double. And if I can get to the top two, I'm going to get into the third tier. Maybe they're not going to get into the top. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. If, if they get in the top, uh, top two in the third tier, they get to get the first division. That's right. So yeah. some, some people I know are hesitant or unwilling to make that leap. Why would we? You know, why would we do it? Just stay in the Leinster League. It's great. We play locally. Our budget is exactly what it is. So we'll see. Yeah. I guess we'll, time will tell. Very true. Would you be confident then that your application, if the FAI did decide 10 teams, you'd be, would you feel more confident this time that there'd be a chance of actually gaining entry into the first division? 
Well, the only reason we didn't get in, uh, yeah. the only reason we didn't get a license mm. is because we lost the stadium mm. at 1.43 in the afternoon on the day of the meeting at five o'clock, which is, you can't even make this stuff up. How, you know, mm. you know they, they had months to, to pull the, pull the, anyway. So you, you understand everybody has heard this and knows it. So, so I can't imagine something like that happening again. Uh, so I, again, we were approved. We were recommended yeah. for approval 48 hours yeah. before the, the, the final decision. The, the, the odd thing is, and again, I'm not the one that makes these decisions. And again, I'm just someone who wants to get into the league. Mm. Uh, but you know, the way they do, it's a little sort of odd. They, you apply for a license, you get the license, and then they vote to yeah. see if they want to let you in. It should be the other way around, in my opinion. Vote to see if you want to let a particular group or somebody in, let them in, and then let them go get the license. <clears throat> yeah. Because, because so we did two two and a half three months of work, spent mm. you know not 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 a million dollars but ten thousand euros or something like that to do all the inspections to run around hire people to do this and do that, and and even if we had gotten the license, you could still get the license and they can still say no to you. Sort of odd, but that's the way it is. Yeah, it's definitely a tough situation. Look, Dennis, thanks for coming on. Best of luck with your application as well. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me on and. Uh, Let's hope it all works out. And again, uh, I'm we're doing it because we're very interested in, in in Irish soccer. And as an Irish citizen, I love Ireland, you know. And I hope that it, it does come together for us. Thank you for having us on. Brilliant stuff.